Okay, welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, in this video, I would like to introduce an online LaTeX platform called Overleaf. Yeah, so if you know, maybe already I have created um, LaTeX tutorial series on my channel where I explained how you can install LaTeX on your operating system that you are using, for example, Linux or Windows, uh, how to install a LaTeX editor, which is called uh, TechMaker. And uh, of course, you have a large variety of editors available, which you can use offline. But um, maybe there are certain advantages which you have if you use an online LaTeX editor. Yeah? So first of all, the advantage is you don't have to install LaTeX locally. You can directly use it uh, on, a, on a server on which you log actually in. And you only see the, the, the input mask where you have to insert all your, your code. Yeah, you don't have to care about the installation itself, about certain packages and so on. You can just use it out of the box. Another benefit is, of course, how we have used it several times in the past in our work groups where I was working um, there. We used it for writing papers, collaborative work. So maybe, you know, Google Docs, where you have a word type of, of format where people can work together on, on one single file or an Excel based system and here in this case uh, the same you can also find for LaTeX and the advantage is that as I said uh, people can work together you can invite people to your project people can write comments they can change things you can go back in history see what people have changed and this makes life a little bit easier compared to just distributing one file via email for example then making changes in that receiving it back and so on yeah so an, an online platform has already very a huge amount of advantages and I think uh, it would be very worthy to go through that yeah so uh, the most important thing is when you go to overleaf.com this is the website you have to register yourself first this is the absolute important thing and what you get then at the end after logging in is a free version of overleaf yeah? where you have the fundamental basics uh, that you can use and uh, later you can also upgrade uh, your account when you click on plans and pricing for example you can find here um, actually uh, a few possibilities like uh, 12 euro per month 18 or the maximum is at the moment 35 euro per month where you get all premium features but in the beginning it's absolutely not ne necessary I always worked with the free account because it gives you already all important features that you need for the development and you don't have to upgrade it at all but it would give you some additional possibilities. Um, it will also give you some uh, possibilities. For example, if you are a student, then you can get discount if you are doing it on behalf of an institute. Maybe some institutes uh, like, for example, CERN, they have an account in Overleaf. So when you uh, when you use your CERN email address to register there, you get automatically all the benefits. Yeah? You don't have to pay any single cent for that. Yeah. But for the time being, uh, we will keep it uh, very simple and we will only stick to the um, yeah, to the fundamental features that we have in the free version. Yeah, And then, of course, after registration, you can see this very nice overview over all the projects that you have created. And of course, I created a new account now to, to explain what you can do with Overleaf. So there are no projects at all. So I can also not go through the list. But later, when we have created some projects, I can also go into details uh, regarding that if you are interested. Yeah, there's also a very nice documentation about Overleaf existing. Yeah, when you go to that, you can find for almost everything that you can do in LaTeX, you can also find um, more or less a small tutorial about that. You can, uh, it, it explains you how you can do fundamental things like creating lists, inserting mathematics and so on. Similar what I have done also in my YouTube channel. But you can also go really uh, into, into details and um, here see how to insert figures and tables, references, uh, and then it goes even to an extent that you find certain packages explained there, yeah? how to make a CV, how to write letters and so on. I guess it's very worthy to look into that. But I hope that with this tutorial, which I'm creating, you are able to also do this yourself without any problem. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as I said, we don't want to um, use any additional plans or pricing. We will directly dive into the topic as usual. So what we will do, we create here, we click on new project. And there it also suggests you that you can use some example projects. You can upload a project which already exists. You can import it from GitHub if you have already something in version control. 
Uh, you can also use templates, which are suggesting you what kind of um, of uh, yeah document you want to create. Like when you want to write a journal for, uh, if you write want an article for an academic journal, then you can uh, click on that. You can write books, formal letters for everything. You have templates, which makes your wor work a little bit easier. But all that maybe I will cover at a certain certain time. So for the time being, I will just create a blank project. And um, maybe I can just call that hello world. Yeah, of course you can also type in any other name, whatever you want, but um, we will just keep it very simple in the beginning. Okay, now it needs a few seconds to load. And then you can see now here, similar to what you can see in, in offline LaTeX editors like um, TechMaker, for example, you can see now also here in Overleaf, we have on the right side, the preview, which shows you the output of the PDF that you are creating. Here in the center, we have uh, the, the LaTeX code, yeah, which you can edit. On the left side, you see here on the upper left side corner, you find the uh, file list of the files that you have inserted. And here on the lower left side, you find um, yeah, the outline of your document. So whenever you insert a section there or a subsection, a chapter and so on. And this is, I think, a very nice feature, uh, which you can even not find in many other LaTeX editors. Yeah, so now we will start from scratch. Um, there is actually an old editor available, which is at the moment called uh, Source Legacy, uh, which is looking very similar to, to the updated one, which is called Source. I would recommend to use that one. You can switch back. Maybe after some time, this option will not be available anymore. So just as a warning, but uh, if you use the standard one, then you are completely on the safe side. Yeah? Okay, um, as you can see here, Although I created a blank project, there are certain things which are automatically inserted. Yeah, you can delete now everything and start from scratch, but sometimes it's good to have at least a few lines included already. Yeah? So you have something where you can start. So what is actually included here is document class. This I have also explained in my LaTeX tutorial. Um, and the document class is very essential. You have to insert this, otherwise it will not run. And here in this case, uh, the name article has been used, yeah? not book, not report, but article. And uh, this UTF-8 package is also a package which one should normally include because of the uh, extra um, yeah, extra characters, uh, which are not ASCII. Yeah? If you want to include them uh, like German umlauts, then you would need something like that. Um, yeah, then the title, the author and the date has also been um, inserted already. Uh, so we, if you don't want this thing, you can delete this if you want to create your own title page, for example, but we will just let it like that. The title is of course the project title. The author is the author name that I have one time inserted when I registered for Overleaf. You can also change that. And uh, here you can see the t uh, date and t uh, the date, actually the date and the month and the year, which is included. Okay. Then you have here again, what I have also explained in my LaTeX tutorial, a begin and end document. Uh, which means that everything, oh, this is very essential to compile this, of course, and everything which you have in between begin and end document will be later uh, com be compiled and shown here. Yeah? So there is the command make title, which uses then this information uh, provided in title, author and date and creates this automatic title here and a section here, which is an introduction. Yeah? Okay, maybe um, for the time being, because I really want to start from scratch, we can delete this here and also make title and section we can delete. Now you can see when you remove the section from here, the outline also changes immediately. Uh, the section is then removed. So this is uh, what I have also explained in my LaTeX tutorial, the absolute basic LaTeX file that you have to provide in order not to receive an error message. And we also have to add some text. So maybe we can just write here, hello world in between begin and end document. And if you compile that, then it, uh, yeah, it removes everything that we have deleted, of course. And it shows now here uh, only the name or the, the text, which we have included, hello world. And the tech file um, is main.tech. This is uh, the standard file that is always created. Of course, you could rename that also. But uh, I suggest to always keep this name in order not to get any problems in the future. Yeah? So when you click on these three dots here, of course, you can click on rename of the, you can rename the file, you can delete the file, you can create also new LaTeX files or BIP files later. Uh, you can create folders and you can even upload a file, yeah? like a picture, for example. Yeah, but of course you also have here these symbols 
uh, the same thing which, which happens when you click here. You can also see here like creating a new file, a new folder, upload a file, rename it or delete it. Uh, one thing I would like to explain is when you go to menu, you can actually download your whole source. It will download the LaTeX files as a zip file. So later offline, you can also edit this or distribute this to some other person. You can uh, actually download the PDF after creating that. Yeah, so it will only download this created PDF. Um, you can copy a project which creates a new project as a copy of that, which can also be sometimes um, useful. There's a word count which shows you how many words you have included. In some cases, when you write an abstract, for example, it's very important that you don't exceed a certain uh, number of words. So this would be an option. Yeah, you can also synchronize this with your Dropbox, with Git and with GitHub. Um, but you need an upgrade of your account. This is not part of the free account. So you can actually, um, yeah, the synchronization is very important. So you also have your files always offline available as an additional backup, for example. Um, yeah, then you can choose here, for example, which compiler you want to use. This is very nice. Um, standard, of course, is PDF LaTeX, but uh, you can also use some more modern type of compiler. Uh, the Tech Live version, which is installed, you can use. Um, so I always recommend, of course, to use the newest one, 2022. But if there are compilation problems, you can go back even up to 2014. Yeah, If somebody provides you a very old file, which does not compile anymore with new compilers. Then if you have created more than one document, you can actually change um, the, the document, which is the main document. Uh, so um, here you can tell to, to LaTeX which should be the one which is compiled and which are ones which are included. Yeah? Um, then you have a spell checker here also. Standard, of course, is English. You can also switch that off, but you can also choose any other of these languages which are shown here, which can be sometimes beneficial if you write something in German, for example. Yeah, there is a dictionary in addition where you can add words which um, the spell checker doesn't know, so it will not underline that, of course. There's an auto completion, which is very important if you type in commands. So uh, it will give you a suggestion of commands that you want to use is also very nice, um, which, I, which I will show a little bit later. It, uh, if you switch on this, which is standard, uh, which is switched on in the standard configuration, auto close brackets, which means that when if you open a bracket, it automatically closes this, which is also very helpful. There is a code check, yeah, which tells you that maybe the code which you entered is not correct. You can also choose different themes of your of your editor of course this is also very helpful in general an overleaf theme you can you can change uh, there are some key bindings regarding certain editors all that is not so much important for the beginner especially font size you can also change if you want to make it uh, bigger or smaller of course all this is related to the editor not to the pdf file that you create you can choose different uh, different fonts for writing uh, you can uh, change the line height and uh, the viewer, yeah. so you can choose whether this should be the special overleaf viewer or a um, browser internal viewer like uh, yeah, Firefox internal uh, viewer that shows your document, yeah, all that up to your preference. But um, in principle, everything is, um, is self-explainable. Nevertheless, when it comes to the point that we have to use this, then I will explain it again uh, in more detail. Yeah, there are also uh, hotkeys available for your keyboard. So you can press certain things instead of pressing here on, on recompile. Uh, you can also just um, use control return. And when you uh, press this, then it automatically recompiles or control S for saving. It automatically also recompiles that. Yeah. OK, I think for the time being, I should stop here. I This is, as I said, only just a short overview over what you can do with uh, with Overleaf. And uh, then later, I want to go more into into the features of, of Overleaf to explain you more what you can do with that. But uh, if you copy and paste this and you write this down, you will see this is the most easiest LaTeX document that you can actually create. And the only thing which you need is uh, the document class, of course, as I have said. Um, even that is not necessary, but I would always recommend to include that. And then you have begin and end document where you have to put uh, just at least one single character in between that to compile this correctly. Yeah, And then, uh, as I said, the rest I will explain later. Uh, yeah, um, Maybe one more thing. Uh, if you want to see whether there are any 
errors uh, which have been created. Um, you can click on log files and then it gives you shows you all the warning messages and errors that you might get throughout your usage. And you can also press here on download PDF, the same which I've also shown you before. And uh, then in this case, it automatically uh, downloads this and uh, shows this in the PDF viewer, which you have chosen, for example, the browser PDF viewer, then you can send this PDF to anyone. Yeah, so this is quite a nice feature. Okay, uh, yeah, and with this, I want to stop here, as I said, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more about that, please put it into the comment section. If you have questions, of course, also. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And if you want to see further videos, and in this case, uh, yeah, I, I want to thank you very much uh, for your attention and hopefully see you soon for a new video.